And we're back. Hello. Yes. Yes, I, I, I too was surprised. Two moors were used, my lord. Okay, so while we were away, we were following around and seeing what was going on with the uh, with the colony, listening to the ridiculous amount of hatches snoozing over there. It seems that, uh, yeah, for some reason. Oh, I, I guess it has just been uh, popping them up there every now and then. But uh, yeah, it's very, very amusing. Very amusing indeed. Uh, oh my lord, it's rather warm. It is rather toasty. Roasty toasty over here. Uh, full on 87 degrees. Uh, but we will get all of this sorted out in the very near future. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, okay, so it is time for a bit of a tour. <laughs> Make that three mods very well. Let's zoom out for the tour. We'll, we'll let it continue slowly. We have thoroughly discovered the frozen core at this point. Uh, there's going to be all, all sorts of things down there for us to be interested in. We should, we should definitely core out. We're slowly coring out more and more of the little abyssalite bubbles. Um, over here, this is our oil. The, the majority of our oil processing. We've got a little bit of oil coming in there from a, an actual leaky fissure. Um, we've got the oil refining down here. With the, It has a dedicated battery setup, so it draws from the main grid, but doesn't give back to the main grid. And it's got its own little coal power plant as an emergency. So that in the event that uh, power starts to fluctuate, which it does a lot, um, this place is the last to lose power so that uh, because it can make quite a lot of power. Uh, right now, our... Uh, Base is powered by um, some petroleum generators over here. We did have a little steam engine keeping this uh, steam setup, keeping the school. We we don't anymore. Uh, There's a, quite a chilly um, CO2 geyser, but it doesn't give much pressure, so uh, it doesn't cool much. We've got some water over here. Uh, down here we've got our hatches and Draco little ranch there. Uh, we are exploring, but honestly, I am I am so bad at exploring. In this game, as you probably noticed, given the the advanced age, it's like cycle 700, and I've done barely anything. Uh, we've got a um, natural gas geyser, uh, which is backing up right now, and some natural gas generators, which are helping with the with the power. Uh, we're slowly expanding out. This is one of the original um, uh, glaciers that we had, and is how this colony managed in the beginning, because it was very warm everywhere. Up here, we've got our shovel farm, and this is one of the first two big projects that I'm working on. This is going to be a steam power room, a power plant that is largely heated by regolith, rather than uh, anything that is taking effort from me. Uh, based on feedback from chat, we probably will be including a, a, a little aqua tuner just to cool things down a little bit. Uh, but we're going to be using a lot of passive cooling as well from, from Wee's Wards. Uh, further to that, uh, the other big project that I'm working on is the industrial brick. This is where most of the exothermic um, uh, buildings and, and especially smelters, anything like that, things that produce quite a lot of heat, but no other gases or, or products that can off-gas live in here. So it's generating a lot of heat and slowly turning water into steam, which then gets... Um, uh, we use that like waste heat to try and reclaim some of that energy with steam turbines. We are above that going to have a power plant as well. And this is going to be cooled by the new cooling system. We used to have a cooling system down here. We, we've been slowly taking it apart, um, but this will be replacing that and gradually being hooked into other systems around the the colony. Um, I will probably end up running some of this system down here to try and cool the industrial area to keep things from getting out of hand. But honestly, I don't mind if this gets really, really toasty. The main things I want to keep keep safe are the living quarters and the, the animal areas. But uh, we may need to get involved with that very quickly because it is getting very, very very warm around here as you can see hopefully that has uh, covered it for you uh it is a lot of co2 yes we're actually um gathering some of it and using it to cool some of my um space items uh up here for example i pump out the co2 which is probably now incredibly warm 45 degrees co2 really that's a lot cooler than i was expecting actually 40 degrees co2 really 
It's like 82 degrees there. There we go. It's much warmer. But the main thing is that this CO2 can gather heat from um, the robo miner I have and vent it into space. So the robo miner is generating heat, but the CO2 in this room is uh, kind of just siphoning that off as it's being vented. So the robo miner never, never um, malfunctions. So it can operate in a near vacuum um, reasonably, reasonably well reasonably well. Uh, over here, the uh, main idea with this is that we're going to accept regolith from the side. It's going to cycle around in here until it's bled off all of its heat energy and then be ejected and then fed to my shovels, which uh, should keep them happy and will keep the base powered, which will keep me happy uh, in no uncertain terms, since that is by far one of the biggest problems that we're dealing with at the moment. Uh, and in turn, that's causing other problems, you know. It's the way that this game works, really, I suppose. Wow, so many poke shell molts. I want them all. I must have them. Okay. Uh, sure, we'll, we'll strip that back. Hopefully we can get all of this insulated pipe in place reasonably soon. We're going to want to bring up the uh, petroleum fairly soon as well. Now, at this stage, I should be able to start allowing this, um... Well, do I want to... Do I want to wait... Yeah, well, I'm going to have to wait for the pipes to be ready first. But as soon as these pipes are ready, I'm going to hook this up and allow the cooler to, to kick in and actually start chilling out this area. Um, that being said... That being said, um, there is one addition that I would like to make. Uh, it's going to require that I make a slight adjustment. I should have thought about this ahead of time, and I didn't, and I feel like a bit of a, a bit of a silly, silly sausage for that. Uh, I do want a liquid tank uh, as a part of a buffer here, and the reason why I want that is that it helps to keep the liquid stable because although we are dealing with um let me just make sure that that is going to be deleted although there are various cooling loops themselves will contain um liquids and they'll manage their own temperatures within that loop the main loop itself should still have a liquid tank for the, for if only to um, kind of gently uh, smooth out the curve of temperature changes. Um, so this will exist there. Also, it's a bit of a buffer, so I can top it up and keep the the system flowing without the risk of jamming the system by trying to put too much liquids into it. So this will be one of the one of the main main ways of uh, running that. So if we can get all of that done quickly. In fact, I'm going to pump that that uh, priority all the way up to nine if I can. And this should allow me to get all of this done and keep everything moving. Dribbling brine down here. That's no, not the best, but it's also not the worst, I suppose. Thankfully, we do have a little bit of water here, but it's not a lot. It's only like, yeah, it's only like, it's dropping. Uh, it's going up every now and then. I suppose it isn't terrible. But we do need a fair bit of coolant here, to be, to be honest. Once these are gone, it's going to be even worse. It's going to be significantly worse, actually. And I might want to relocate these down further, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. That, that glacier... This was a glacier. This whole area was a glacier once. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Uh, the other thing I could do is I could also pump water across from here and just allow it to uh, f uh, flush down because that liquid is fairly cool there. I suppose that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be a problem at all. You do tiny bits of work and then run out of power, unfortunately. But eventually, more of this liquid will actually get flushed out. 
It's quite warm at this point, which is good, because we are trying to build the temperature up to 190, because at that point, these are going to have a lot of time to play. And uh, they, these will be giving us quite a lot of energy at that point as well. Now, we're going to be using steel over here, because I can't afford for this to sh shut down if, if the liquid coming in here was superheated for some reason. There we go. It's not going to do anything fancy. It is literally just going to uh, manage that liquid in the pool. Right, okay, it is time at long last for me to set this up. So, slow this down for a moment. I need to hook this up into the main grid, the main power. Uh, in fact, this is the only one that needs it, so let's just draw that across. Actually, let me grab it so I'm making it of the same material. Let's get that done. But this... Uh, also, I, I need to hook that up, actually, to a, uh... Oh, my lord. I completely completely missed that. Wow, that would have been bad. That would have been awful, in fact. Let's uh, get that properly set up. There we go. Uh, this should be storing refined metals uh, lead, I imagine. Uh, this one, we'll copy the setting from there across. Setting applied. This should be disabled. Um, no, actually, it's enabled with the automation grid, I suppose. Because we don't have much power over here. That's fine. But uh, as soon as they have hooked all of this up, the signals are, if the liquid is below 50 degrees, it can cycle through. If it is a, uh, below 95 degrees, it can carry on. So in other words, if it's above 95 degrees, it needs to leave. And at that point, we should be able to hook this all up properly. Now, I need this to have an exit point. But we should start seeing this moving around. How hot is the petroleum in here? Oh, we would need that to be uh, hooked up first, I guess. Hopefully someone will be along with copper in just a moment. We'll see all of this starting to work. What's this water vent? It is just clean water, yeah. It's uh, water from the steam turbines or uh, fresh input water. There we go. This is now going to be filtering through. It should never go back through this system. But to ensure that, we need to quickly break the loop. Um... Honestly, it would... Ooh. I need to ensure that there is priority in the way that this moves. So, I require... That can bridge across. This can come down and bridge up. Yeah. Uh, slight... Slight delay in my initial plans. I need to make sure that this, is br this has got... Um, a direction of flow like so so that it never tries to go back into the system otherwise you can have all sorts of terrible problems now initially this should be fine because uh, this liquid can is going to be just moving around the system normally for a little while but we need to get that sorted right now we've also got a new printable available let's go and have a look at that uh, reject all I'm not going to take pip eggs just to eat them. Not when I've got over 1.2 million kcal. That would be wrong. There we go. Now, there is one other thing, actually, that I need to set up down here. I, I should have considered that. And that is that currently, the only condition on new liquid entering the system is this allowing it to. But, I need there to always be a little bit of room in this. Um, presently, I welcome more petroleum up into the system from down here, but I don't want that. I need to remove all of this, all the way up. All the way up. And all the way across. 
this needs to control this input point as well. So it's not just this activating it. We need an AND gate. I need room in the system to allow new um, water in. But I also require... So I'm going to delete this one. It's the easiest one for me to go for. But I also require that the temperature of that, uh, of, of the, the petroleum, is sufficiently low. Right. Okay. Chop, chop. You've got super lots of work. I'm sorry to have to rush you like this because I made a mistake. But, you know, life is what it is. Right, so the petroleum is exiting here at 27 degrees. It is back up here at 33 degrees. It is going to be drawing in a lot of the temperature out of this system now for a little while. There we go. Getting everything built up correctly, hopefully. Let's have a look. Yeah, that should be fine. And then we'll just connect this AND gate. So both of these have to be true. It has, it has to be below 50 degrees, and there has to be room in here. Now, this will send a reg signal over, let's say, 20%. So, it'll hold one ton of uh, petroleum, and it'll allow more in. Well, actually, let's let's set the, the low threshold as uh, 20, but the high threshold is 25. So, as, as long as there's... Uh, if there's ever less than a ton of petroleum in there, it'll allow more petroleum into the system and uh, up to 25%. So there we go. So 1.25 tons will be between 1 and 1.25. You enjoy my Factorio series? Oh, I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you. What temp does the water come out of the vent at? Honestly, it's the first time I've seen one used to getting steam vents uh, myself at the water source. So, uh, in here, we're getting it out at 95 degrees. So, it's reasonably warm. Right, let's uh, make sure that's being done as a reasonably high priority. There we go. Good, good, good. Oh, no. You're not going to be able to reach there, are you? I'm going to have to disconnect that so that you can reach down. Ugh, I hate that. Come along. Chop, chop. Need it done. What's the temperature in here? The temperature's getting a lot nicer. A lot nicer. Now, if we look in here, it's not got very much petroleum in there, but it's at 31.9 degrees. It's not going to get kicked out until it's at 95 degrees. It's going to take a long time for that to happen. Now, the one problem with this... Well... The issue here is that if we run out of power, it will eject the coolant, which is not the best way for it to work. If I were to be designing this system again, I would make enough room for there to be a dedicated battery that will um, supply this. But unfortunately, we are a little bit away from that right now. Uh, where did that natural gas come from? Curious. But it does look okay. Yep. Okay, everything is uh, ready to receive. Now then, we do have this system is ready to input more um, liquids into the, the system for us. So what we're going to want to do with this is change this up just a little bit to something around here. Now, we want to give priority to new liquid entering the system. You always want to give priority to new liquid entering the system, otherwise you can't fill anything up. Um, so, what we're going to want is as soon as that's finished doing what it's doing, we're going to run this across and into this system. And then we're going to hook this one up to, again, probably something like... Um, I mean, the, I want the main cooling system to have quite a lot of uh, liquid in it. Uh, so we're probably, in fact, going to rise that all the way up to 50. 
It'll start accepting more once it's below a quarter of its capacity and won't stop trying to accept more until it's uh, at half of its capacity. And then we are going to run a signal from this all the way down. Oof, that's going to be... Oh, actually, we will... Well, it'll be easier if we come across here and then run down inside. And then across... And then just all the way up. And that will control the exit point down here. You construct that wire, don't need it there. Make that a priority nine deconstruct. There we go. I like having systems that can load themselves. I prefer not to have to rely on myself, honestly, because I'm not as good as the system was probably. So uh, I prefer having it automated in that regard. There we go. The system's doing okay for now. Happily processing all of this petroleum. And pulling down the temperature. Now the temperature's just going to sit there now at about 30 degrees. Because there's not really anything in here that's increasing the temperature. Uh, I mean, it's going to wobble a little round about there. But for the most part, it'll, it'll be an even temperature. And it'll rise evenly as it goes. But what we want to do is we want to start introducing heat. Now, part of that is going to come from us having a load of petroleum sent up from down here. That, <clears throat> excuse me. That'll go through the thermo aqua tuners. And then it'll probably just immediately enter this liquid reservoir at a, at a much lower temperature. <coughs> excuse me. I, I swallowed a bit the wrong way. I'm going to go catch up with the last stream. Just wanted to tell you, Avak, that I'm very happy that you're back. Hopefully you had a nice time. I did. Thank you so much for, for saying that. Tears, mate. Uh, yeah, maybe you Duke farted. Interesting, though, because I don't think we've got any flatulent dupes. Maybe we do, though. Let me have a quick look. The only person that I think it might be is you. Gastrophobia, buff Mohans. No. No, you're not a dupe that farts. Hmm. Interesting. It may have come up from way, way down, like when someone opened a door or something like that. Who knows? Who knows at this point? Could have been from anything. The important part is that stuff is moving. Now. We've got about 761 kilos in there. This liquid reservoir will hopefully be hooked up shortly. If we have a look at this. It is sending a green signal, so it is going to request more liquid soon. But like I said, if I were to design this differently, I would probably hook it up such that... Uh, Running out of power didn't mean that it would immediately vent all of its coolant. That doesn't seem like a very useful response to running out of power. Uh, but oh well. That is That sounds like a problem for future AVAC. There we go. It's requesting more. That's being entered into the system. Now, some... The most of this is too warm. So, this one. Again, what you want is for this system to be empty. Because what we saw there, the first packet slipped through the system. The second ones are going through multiple aqua tuners at a time. But they will eventually run out of power. And then they'll, they'll just bypass. Now these are going to get over here. We'll watch the uh, the signal logic. As we can see, this is not... The, the liquid going through here is not the correct temperature. So it is instead going back around to get cooled down again. I mean, some of it is within the operational temperature. That is 50 degrees up to uh, up to 95. Uh, like the, the liquid here it was much, much um, better. But uh, it certainly wasn't enough to be allowed in to start with. Now, we're getting closer to the temperatures that we want to see now. We want this to be up at 190 before this is going to activate and allow the uh, the steam turbines to turn on. 
Now with that done, we can start considering grabbing some of this petroleum from down here. Because all this is doing is it's just moving heat around, really. And to get that to happen, it's a pretty simple operation. We're just going to grab you. And we are going to copy this over. That'll give uh, priority on this petroleum leaving the system and heading up here. These batteries are happy to receive it right now. This will then start producing polluted water. The polluted water will be gathered out here and entered into the system. This will be given priority so we don't end up accidentally flooding anything. These will uh, produce, uh, I believe they produce CO2, but we don't mind in this room. Um, it'll eventually get vented out. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, it produces CO2. And it'll eventually get quite high pressure in there, honestly. But uh, the next time someone comes, pops through a door, there we go. And the pumps will take care of it all. And we should see the batteries are actually now starting to charge. Now, hopefully... If we uh, enable this building, someone's going to come along and uh, set this up properly. And these, instead of just giving us two kilowatts, will give us three kilowatts. I would be very, very, very happy with that. Extremely happy with that, actually. Um, yeah, I think I think that should be fine for the most part. These should shut down when I get too hot, too high. Yeah, they're kind of hovering. At this point, many of our other um, systems aren't even going to be using much of their their um, power. For example, oh, that was actually at 1980. What have we got down here? 1975. So we want this one to be a little bit lower, actually. So this one could be down at 80, 70. So these won't turn on while I've got natural gas to run from. Unless the battery drops below 70%, in which case they'll engage. But for the moment, seems to be working a little bit better. Now, that was a priority seven. This is a priority seven. It's going to produce some chips. Now, hopefully, some will then come along and start making use of these. We'll see that happening here and there. Now, let's make sure that these are actually power rooms. Yes, they are power plants. Enables power control station. Good, good, good. Perfect. This is exactly what I want to see. And uh, what's the temperature in here? Yeah, it's getting higher. Now, what we're seeing here is this is trying to fill up with new with new liquid. It's allowing new new liquid in rather than this cycling. And that's necessary. But it does mean that the uh, the cooling loop stops being a loop, really. Now, one of the nice things about this is this liquid on the ground here is going to interact with the coolant as it's moving through these uh, tungsten, um, these tungsten uh, parts of the pipe. So it's going to pull out a little bit of extra heat as well, which is uh, going to be an interesting one. But this is practically full of power, which is not exactly what I want. Don't want that to, to fill with power, generally speaking. We've got a lot of power being generated now. So, I'm quite happy with that. We must possess uh, the building's necessary component. Add the effect energy tune-up. Improves building. Honestly, I'm going to say that these buildings are a priority eight. Because I just don't want to keep having to deal with all of my stuff breaking and not having enough power all the time. So please, take care of that for me. What's it like in here at the moment? Uh, it's getting up there. These will eventually turn on. Future Avak has exceptional wisdom. It's his problem now. Yes, yes, I feel that it's completely fair. Future Avak won't have been streaming for nine hours and 50 minutes. He can deal with it then. There we go. One del microchip delivered. No, don't just run away. Come here and fix it. Oh, my God. Why? Uh, if we have a look down here, we have completely drained the system of petroleum. Now the next part, we want to 
basically drain these systems of petroleum. We're, we're backing up the petroleum over here. Uh, effectively... I want I, I want petroleum to, to be joining the system. Um, the petroleum is coming out of the, here. 